Okay, we're here in front of the federal courthouse, and we wanted to go in and film the scales of justice, but no cameras are allowed. But here we have the American Eagle holding the 13 arrows, representing the 13 colonies and the 13 leaves and the 13 stars. So we thought we could find out what is true storytelling by asking the eagle. So eagle, what is true storytelling and how do we know it's true? So another possibility is the all-seeing eye, which would know the truth, right? Yeah. And tell us if that's true storytelling. Gans Larson and Lena Brun, and we're going to talk to you today about something we're doing together called What is True Storytelling? And we've got a number of exemplars we're going to show you to walk you through. They say that Soren Breyer, he studies Purse and Lumen, uh, Giles Deleuze, Martin Heidegger, Karen Barad, Slava Zizek, Henri Saval, Mary Parker Follett, Roy Bashkar, and the team of the true storytellers. Uh, we look at the multiplicities or the dialectics that each has done to accomplish what we're calling true storytelling, and each one does it in a different way. I've organized this diagram to show you the ones that are the dialectical exemplars. Uh, Plato, Hegel, Marx, Zizek take a negation of the negation approach. Heidegger, Follett, Sabal, and Bashkar are all influenced in the, to what I call positive dialectics, and it's more of a synthesis model. Then there's a multiplicity series of, of early and late Deleuze, and Karen Barat. We're going to start with Soren Breyer from the Copenhagen Business School who spent his life studying Charles Saunders' Purse and Edmund Lumen and Nicholas Lumen, as I call him Edmund. So that's Soren Breyer. This is Charles Saunders' Purse, one of your American pragmatists, along with Dewey and me and others. And for Soren Breyer, he has this star model where he integrates the ontology of living systems in the world, plus your inner consciousness, the sense of meaning you have from the world and consciousness, matter, energy, and styles of communication in the center. Here's an example of one of the many triads, a multiplicity of them, the interpretant, the object, and the representation of that's from Peirce. Another thing that Peirce does with the three modes of evolution, by chance, by love, and by mechanistic necessity, the habits that are formed. So he looks at the interplay of those three, and that, I think, forms a multiplicity. From Lumen, Breyer looks at three kinds of autopoiesis, the, the psychical, the biological, and the socio-communicated. Now, Deleuze, is very much into multiplicities. You know him from his work on rhizomes, and I do a lot with spirals of repetition and difference. And there's early and late Deleuze. This is late Deleuze with Guattari, where here's an example of a mushroom rhizome. It grows in every direction. It has no dialectic, really. It just reaches its limits as a series. This is also from uh, late Deleuze. And here he has the soul, the God, and the world, and that steer head image, and the waves of time, of the spaces and exteriority. Very familiar with Martin Heidegger being in the world, one of the most renowned ontologists, his work on Daizen, right? Being there in the world. And he has a couple of different kinds of dialectics that he develops. And he really wants to uh, disprove Hegel's approach to time in his classic book on um, being in time. And the whole book is really often about redoing the dialectic. Another multiplicity theorist is Karen Barad, agential realism, intra-activity of materiality with discourse, and space-time mattering with no dashes because it's an inseparability. She's strongly influenced by Bruno Latour, another multiplicity theorist of the assemblage of actors and actants, 
and he's very famous for the ant theory, actor network theory, and he says to be the ant, to be the investigator and, and explore the networks and the multiplicities about organization. So being the ant is very important. Slava Zizek uh, does a different kind of dialectic called the negation of the negation, and he wants to bring back Hegel along with Lacan. So very psychoanalytic, very political approaches, uh, fascinating reading. He spent his life work really doing, bringing Hegel back. This is Henri Saval. I've worked with him for 20 years. And he has a trilectic between his, what he calls qualimetrics to bring together financial data, quantitative data, and qualitative interviewing and observation data. He uses a scientific method here where he has observation, conceptualization, modeling, experimentation, evaluation, validation, formulation of more and changed hypothesis. So he does a series of implementations of experiments and organizations according to his trilectic model. Uh, now, he believes that Taylor, Fayol, and Weber had formed a kind of a virus that has been instilled in corporations and public organizations around the world, and he works to take out that virus. And I think he appreciates very much in his early writing, Mary Parker Follett, who I believe is the young sung hero, the mother of systems theory, who really brought this field to the, where it can be today. And she believes that you grow your power. Now, this is Roy Bashkar, uh, again, very influenced by Hegel and Heidegger, and wants to look at the realist ontology, the actual ontology, the empirical ontology, and sees these embedded within one another and doesn't like the elephant fallacy, right? He calls that an epistemic fallacy. Now, he's very stratified and layered levels of reality from the embodied psychological, the embodied critter, uh, and all the way out to the ecosystem. And he'll do work even on climate change and the whole ecology. So from the micro to the very macro, now this is all my group here with Jens and Lena, and we're influenced by Plato, the virtues, the good, the just, the true and the beautiful, and freedom coming out of those virtues. And this group does uh, storytelling boot camps based upon that. And the work of Ole Kirkaby. So they have, Ole Kirkaby is also the Copenhagen Business School, faculty and he has a way of working with true storytelling. This is uh, my work on Tomorrowland, how there's storytelling going on in different rooms all at the same time and you can't be in all rooms at once so you're falling from room to room in the spatiality and temporality and the mattering of storytelling. We're deeply influenced in our true storytelling work by Walter Benjamin. He said, death is a sanction of everything the storyteller can tell. He has borrowed his authority from death. He wrote the most fabulous essay ever written on storytelling. Who killed Walter Benjamin? Some say he committed suicide. Anna Hart says that. But now there's a new film, new book that says perhaps Stalin said it, sent his hit squad to have him assassinated. The true storytelling people, Jens, Lena, and myself, were interested in the tree and what's below in the root system of storytelling, the passion, motivation, meaning, and values, and then what you see visibly in the narratives, the documentations, the strategies, the results. So we look at situation, strategy, and the basis from macro to micro power. And that's it for what is true storytelling. There's a website here, and you can go and find study guides, and you can see very visible images to what I showed you today. And if you're interested in true storytelling, please get a hold of us. This is the Chinese symbol for truth, and so it's very global, cross-cultural, that people are interested in the truth of storytelling. And here's another symbol for truth and honesty. Wouldn't that be nice? And there's my flame.
So thank you for watching. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the slides that you may not have been very clear. And this is the website where you can see all the study guides for all of the authors that I mentioned in the video. And here's Jens and Lena. We're the true storytelling team, and we do boot camps on storytelling. What is true storytelling? Each of the authors I've talked about looks at it in a completely different way. And some take the dialectical approach, some take a multiplicities approach, and it's part of a new book I'm doing for Rutledge. And these are the chapters or streams that are in the book. Some have positive multiplicity, some negative, some positive dialectic, some the negation of negation, which I'm calling negative dialectic. Saval has the trialectic, etc. So I've di basically divided the book into chapters of on the dialectical storytelling methods and the multiplicity storytelling methods. And here's a good visual of the storytelling model of the team, uh, Jens and Lena and myself. I'm looking at the root system and the above ground system, the narratives above ground. So I hope that gives you some idea. And again, go to the website and you can check all this stuff out. And uh, thank you for listening. Bye.